Cold Steel Bushman. Not advertised or promoted as a heavy chopper. Mainly because of two issues. Number one, it simply doesn't have the mass. But number two, it doesn't have a great handle for it. You can't really get a secure purchase on this grip, which means you're going to be having some movement in the hand, which means your energy is going to be wasted during the impact. A couple of problems I'm having that should be obvious. I can't get the opening notch to go clean. And as you can see, the cuts are staggering everywhere. And what I'm finding is this is actually turning in my hand as I'm swinging it. So I'm holding it back here to actually shift the center of mass, which is about right there. I need to get that in front of my hand and uh, inertial moment which is slightly farther ahead of this I need to get that well in front of my hand so I can get some power on the rotation but the problem is this is actually turning this way in my hand so I'm trying to cut so that I'll hit right here the blades actually rotating when I'm swinging so it's hitting further ahead or it's hitting further back depending on what way it swings so I'm averaging between 10 to 15 hits, but that's mainly because it's horribly staggered due to the handle itself. Now see, I meant that cut to go in there, so to line up with this, and it jumped ahead a bit, and it's closed the notch in. Same thing there, see? I meant to hit there and I jumped ahead. Uh, let's give this one another try. Whoa, that didn't sound good. Now, that's about what I would expect. You can see here now that the entire primary grind in this area has deflected over to the other side. So, as I sort of expected would happen, the primary grind has rippled in this area and there's just a great big dent, uh, the full thickness of my thumb actually, where the primary grind is bent uh, that way. Now there's four reasons why that happened. Number one, I cut into a knot and a knot broke. So when you normally cut into wood, 
you can see that you get a stable cut where the forces are on both sides of the blade equally. Now if the forces are on both sides of the blade, there's nothing unbalanced. When you cut into a knot, it breaks. The knife will tend to want to turn because you're still trying to cut with it. That means the force is only on this side and there's nothing counterbalancing it on the other side. It tends to push the blade that way. The other reason is that this has a primary hollow grind, which means that the wood will only make contact on the very edge and somewhere up here above it. That creates a torque between the edge and this part of the bevel that it can twist around. On a flat grind or on a convex grind, that's greatly reduced, which means you have to hit it that much harder to make them ripple. The other effect is, again, because this was naturally turning in my head, chopping into the knots becomes much more dangerous because the knife is already moving when I'm actually trying to swing with it. And the last factor is, this is tempered for toughness, which decreases the hardness quite significantly and loses strength. So that weakens the blade a bit more. If it had been significantly harder, it would have resisted the bending. So it was a combination of those four that caused this edge to be bent out of shape and prematurely ended the work. So now you can see the rather large ripple in the primary grind. So which has been caused by the four factors of the knot breaking, the handle being unstable, the primary hollow grind, and the softness of the steel, and of course the cross-section. Now this is not the end of the world. We first have to straighten the edge back. So I'll just use this as an anvil. Now, of course, if I had a flatter surface here, not this old piece of 6x6, six six, and a better hammer, this would be a bit faster because I'm getting some inconsistencies from both. Now, that's about as good as I'm going to be able to take it with that. Now, let's introduce our little friend. Now, that should be obvious, I'm not actually trying to chop through the knot as much as obliterate it. With no effect whatsoever on the hunglas. Now, the interesting thing is, the edge on the hunglas is very similar in thickness to the edge on the Bushman. The only difference is the hunglas has a flat grind so that when it goes into the wood, even on the knots, let me get rid of this, and I'll smash it into one here, the whole blade makes smooth contact. So you can't get that violent twisting action on the edge that you do get on hollow grinds which makes them susceptible to blowouts even at the same edge thickness that you will find on a flat ground knife. So even if I was to do something which you really shouldn't do to this, which is 
that. Even when violently prying on it, and again, that's not trying to chop through the wood, just break the knot. There's another one. You can't get that violent twisting action that you get with hollow grinds. Now I'm not saying flat grinds are invulnerable. If you bring the flat grind down too far, the edge won't have enough metal and it will become unstable. But the point I'm trying to make is that a flat grind, because it supports the edge with full contact behind the edge, the edge can be thinner than on a hollow grind of the same quality as steel because again this whole area will make contact with the wood whereas on a hollow grind it doesn't make contact which produces a violent torque between the edge and the top of the bevel where it makes contact.